I'm near the market town of Devizes to learn why this white horse was created and why the first white horse they had here disappeared. This is SNJ TV1 and you're watching That's Kind of Interesting. Today I'm in the English county of Wiltshire to see the Devizes white horse. It's located a little over half a mile north from the hamlet of Roundway and about two miles northeast from the market town of Devizes where it gets its name from. The horse is facing to the right and is in a running motion. All four legs can be seen and are complete with hooves. At the rear of the horse is a long flowing tail that hangs down some 19 metres. At the other end of the horse is its head which is complete with two small ears and an eye and nostril both made from large rocks. The horse measures some 45 metres across by 45 metres high and is visible from Bratton Camp, some ten and a half miles away, the home of the Westbury White Horse, Wiltshire's oldest white horse. The Devizes horse is Wiltshire's eighth existing horsey hill figure and is one of only four in the UK facing to the right. It's unique for being the last hill figure to be cut during the 20th century. <laughs> It's the second horse they've had in these parts, but to discover what became of the first horse, I'm going to have to move from this part of Roundway Hill to this part of Roundway Hill, a mile east from the new horse and next to this Iron Age hill fort called Oliver's Castle. Oliver's Castle dates back to around about the 7th century BC and gets its name from Oliver Cromwell, although there was no evidence he ever visited the area. There was a bloody battle in the surrounding fields in 1643 where his parliamentarian forces were defeated by the heavily outnumbered Royalist cavalry. And it was here some 200 years later in May 1845 that the original horse was cut. This location was perfect, partly because it was underneath an Iron Age hill fort which almost seems to be an obligatory place to put chalk horses, but mainly because from up here it would have been seen for miles and miles. The horse was known to the locals as Snob's Horse. Not because it was posh and looked down on everyone. Well, I guess from up here it literally did look down on everyone, but that's not the reason. The word snob was a slang term for cobbler or shoemaker, and it was a bunch of shoemakers or snobs that cut the horse into the hillside, thus Snob's Horse. But what happened to the horse? Well, Snob's Horse is an excellent example of what happens to a chalk hill figure when it's not regularly maintained or scoured which is just a fancy word for getting rid of weeds and tidying up the edges. If a hill figure isn't maintained, grass and weeds will encroach over it and it will eventually disappear. And that's what's happened here. The horse wasn't tended to and it just faded away. No one really knows exactly what the horse looked like. There are no drawings, no paintings and no photographs of the completed horse. It didn't even appear on any maps. We have, however, been given tantalising glimpses of parts of the horse during certain weather conditions. This photograph, for example, was taken in 1979 after a flurry of snow. In it, you can see what appears to be the head and neck of the original horse. There were several failed attempts over the years to get the snob's horse recut. In 1954, Peter Greed, a sixth form pupil of the Devizes Grammar School, drew up plans for recreating the snob's horse and although these plans were never used at the time, they became an integral part of the design for the new Devizes horse. I wonder how faithfully this drawing represents what the snob's horse actually looked like. As you know, the horse was cut by shoemakers and I wonder how much experience they had in designing and cutting a hill figure. Was it horse-like, as in Peter's interpretation, or more of a representation of a horse like the Uppington and Folkestone horses. 
maybe a detailed scan of the hill would reveal the secrets of what the horse looked like, but until that happens, we will never know its true shape. The official name for the new horse is the Devizes Millennium White Horse, which may give you a bit of a clue when it was built. Google Earth calls it the Roundway White Horse, but I think most people just refer to it as the Devizes White Horse. The horse's existence can ultimately be credited to a Mrs Sarah Padwick, who, like the cobblers of 1845, thought that the hill underneath Oliver's castle was a jolly good place for a hill figure. Sarah didn't have a horse in mind, but thought that a crop circle pattern would look nice and be a good way to mark the new millennium. In fact, it was such a good idea, she wrote to her local newspaper to let everyone know. Her letter was printed, and it was then that she learnt that her hill figure thunder had already been stolen some 153 years before. Unfortunately, in those 153 years, the idea of cutting a hill figure wherever you liked was no longer so practical, and recutting the snob's horse in its original location was now going to be impossible even if you had enough shoemakers to do it. The land was now designated as a site of special scientific interest, and apart from there being poor access to the site, there were concerns of what effect there could be on the ramparts of Oliver's castle if a hill figure was cut so close to them. But Mrs Padwick had opened a can of worms, and the idea of creating a hill figure had now grown wings, and after so many failed attempts in previous years, 1999 was going to be the year Devizes would get a new horse, and this one was going to be to celebrate the fast approaching new millennium. The owners of a piece of land called Bankfield gave permission for it to be used as the location for the new horse, and the design that Peter Gree drew up in 1954 was used as a blueprint, with one small change. In the original design, the horse was facing to the left, but this one would be facing to the right, towards the horse at Alton Barnes, some five and a half miles away. It took around three weeks for the horse to be marked out and cut. There was a communal dig where people could cut a metre section of earth and were given a certificate to mark the occasion. The main works on the horse were carried out by Pierce Civil Engineering. And by the 20th of September 1999, a little over a year since Mrs Padwick wrote to her local newspaper, the Devizes Millennium White Horse was completed. In 2009, a decade after the horse was built, hundreds of people formed the number 10 on the horse to commemorate its 10th birthday. And in 2012, a one-tenth scale version was cut into the grounds of Nurstead Primary School to celebrate their 10th birthday. The Devizes Millennium White Horse and Oliver's Castle are open all year round and are free to visit. To get to the horse, just type Devizes White Horse into your satnav. There is free parking at both the horse and Oliver's Castle. Sadly, there are no dedicated viewing points, but there are various places you can stop to see the horse in passing. There'll be some bloopers following in a second, so stick around for those. If you like this sort of content, why not check out our other videos on SNJ TV One? There will be a link to my hill figure playlist at the end of this video. And why not consider subscribing and hitting that bell so you'll be notified when we release new videos. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. I've created several spherical images of the Devizes White Horse and Roundway Hill for you to explore. They're really easy and fun to use. First of all, find the Devizes White Horse in Google Maps or Google Earth. Then click on the Street View icon. Doing this will reveal blue dots and clicking one of them will take you to a spherical image of the horse taken by me or other photographers. You can explore the horse without leaving your house. I'm near the market town of Dover. Do I'm near the market town of Dover's. Of Dover. There was a community dig where people could uh, bollocks it up. It took about three weeks to get this line right. <laughs> The horse's existence can ultimately be credited to a Mrs Sarah Padwick, who, like the cobblers of 1845, thought that the underneath... <laughs> what did she think? The land was now designated as a site of special scientific interest. And apart from being... Oh, a duck. 1999 was going to be the year Devizes would get a new horse, 
and this one was going to be to whack <laughs> and this one was going to be built to celebrate the fast approaching new millennium it's easy for me to say there is free parking at both the i'm going to have to move from this part of roundway hill let's do that again because that was bollocks and we're definitely recording yeah There's a counter underneath. Yeah, you done one minute forty-seven of shit. <laughs> Is that helping? <laughs> You're not motivating the talent. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Sincere grin, happy smile. Right, we're done.